go ahead and get started here. Good afternoon. This is Bill Moran with our guest this afternoon, Dorothy Graydon. Uh, we're visiting with Dorothy uh, to talk about her art. And boy, what a lot of art she has here at um, Fluid Coffee Bar. It's simply amazing. And we'll and that's why we're doing this uh, today. We're using my phone to do Facebook Live, and we're using a portable recorder so you can uh, actually experience some of our art along with us. Uh, but we're going to talk about Dorothy, first of all. So, Dorothy, welcome to the show. Thanks, Bill. Thanks for having me, and thanks to the Fluid Coffee Bar oh. people, Allison and Chuck and Ethan. and Definitely. They are definitely supportive of the arts, and uh, uh, you're one of the artists that they, I, I know they've talked once they put these up, it's, it really is a change from what they've had in here before. So it's, uh, it's, it's interesting. And we're going to talk about your art and, and uh, what inspired you and all your pieces here in just a bit. Uh, first of all, we're going to uh, talk about what's uh, the background, Dorothy? Oh, hold on just a second. I'm going to redo it. It's too... I'm fumbling around. You guys on Facebook, you hear all this. <laughs> this is live at its best, so. <laughs> oh, we're still on? On Facebook. Oh, not on. okay, okay. Good afternoon. This is Bill Moran here with Dorothy Graydon. She's our guest this afternoon on the Bill Moran Show. Uh, we're here at Fluid Coffee Bar, uh, and we're going to talk about Dorothy and her art that she has on display uh, for the next two weeks, is it? or is I think it... it's for the through the month. Through the month. So, yeah. mm -hmm. um, by the way, we'll talk about that later, but you're more than welcome to come out to Fluid Coffee Bar. Uh, these folks are very supportive of the arts, as you well know, and um, Dorothy is just one of the many artists that they've had on display here. So, uh, let's get after it. Uh, Dorothy, we're going to go over your bio here just a bit. Uh, Dorothy Graydon is an award-winning artist, lives in Valparaiso, Indiana. A former educator of 25 years, she now works full-time in her art studio and remains active as a freelance art educator, speaker, and juror. She, was she has exhibited her art in numerous solo and group exhibits and has represented by the Ann Nathan Gallery in Chicago until Ann's recent retirement in late 2016. She has given the presentations of her art process and inspiration in the U.S., Ireland, Russia, I'll have to talk about that later, and Australia. Uh, Dorothy holds an education degree from Indiana University and a master's in liberal, liberal studies from Valparaiso University. She studied art and art history at Indiana University and Valparaiso University. Inspired by her travels and fascination with ancient cave drawings, Dorothy works primarily in mixed media using textured, hand-pulled, and dyed cotton rag as a background for her whimsical in inspira impersonations of distant and forgotten cultures. A certified scuba diver, she often incorporates sea elements into her paintings. Wow. <laughs> we got through that. <laughs> so interesting bio. Uh, so, um, wow. So let's talk about what inspired a kindergarten teacher. And Dorothy and I have known each other for 25 years because uh, I, I think we started maybe roughly about the same time mm -hmm. at Valparaiso Community Schools. And I never envisioned when I walked into this uh, kindergarten classroom. And by the way, the neat story I have to sh uh, share about Dorothy and her classroom, it, it was kind of neat. Every time I walk in, she'd stop everything class was doing and say, children, this is Mr. Moran. He's in charge of all the computers everywhere in Valparaiso <laughs> Community Schools. I got a kick out of that. It, and all these kids were looking up, wow. <laughs> so, oh, you're so cool. Yeah, yeah. I got a kick out of that, though, at uh, Northview. When, every time I enjoyed coming in your classroom at Northview. So, uh, what got you interested in art? How did you, is it something back in elementary school or just recently? No, you know, I've been interested in art since I was in elementary school, actually. Um, I, I grew up in Gary, Indiana, and of course, down in downtown Gary, there were lots of alleys, right? Mm -hmm. Alleys, we don't know what alleys are anymore, but 
I used to walk up and down the alleys. So you're one of those kids with spray cans that marked up the neighborhood? <laughs> no, no, I collected, oh, I collected col big pieces of wood. Okay, And All then right. I'd come home and paint them. Ah, So cool. people would throw, you know, if they were doing remodeling or whatever, they would throw their wood out, and I always picked it all up and brought it home and painted on it. So you weren't one of those spray can mural artists? No, that, uh, but no. maybe someday. <laughs> Everyone, you hear that? So just watch for Dorothy's art to appear somewhere in Valparaiso. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> um, and, so, then, and then uh, the nuns would always have me do their bulletin boards for them. It was really funny. Ah, uh, the They'd nuns. Like, Where did you go to elementary school? Uh, St. Luke's by Saint Emerson. Yeah, that's yeah. in fact that's where my family was from before we moved to Glen Park. Interesting. Oh, okay. Yeah, they went, so yeah. We went to St. My um, my sister and brother-in-law went to St. Luke's and then uh, to Emerson. So, um, besides uh, paintings, what I guess what inspires? Let's back up and say what ask you what inspires your art and what's um, what and because it seems to have all of the. I don't want to say same theme, but there there does seem to be a common thread throughout your art. Oh, absolutely. Um, yeah, uh, I've for the past thirty years I've been hiking out west, um, and, and searching for the the ancient cave art. It's actually called rock art here in the United States. Uh, ancient rock art that's on in remote areas on canyon walls, uh, boulders, canyons, uh, big. Um, in the mountains, in the in in the valleys, you know, there's there's rock art everywhere because the prehistoric people carved and painted their images that they saw in their heads. They painted them on and and carved them into the into the walls, the the panels on the walls. And I've been hiking for 30 years. I started out hiking with my daughter and my sister 30 years ago, and um, and just going up on cliffs and going up on mesas and finding rock art everywhere and and talking with archaeologists and um, Bureau of Land Management rangers, uh, ethnologists, uh, Native Americans, and uh, and have learned so much from them and, and books that I've read on all the different kinds of, of the rock art that there is. And I've hiked everywhere from the Rio Grande all the way up into central Montana. Um, and every state in between, and usually in the summer, in the desert, in the heat, um, walking through canyons that are two f two feet deep s deep sand, and so anyway, it's it's a it's not an easy life to be out there in the desert, but I just absolutely love it, and so it's pretty good exercise as well, climbing through the sand and in the desert heat, which gets it above a hundred degrees, as we all know, and yeah. So and then the southwest. So um, any any of the caves in New Mexico? Oh, lots. So New Mexico is loaded with the rock art, and really there aren't that many caves that actually have the rock art. It's mostly uh, rock shelters that are like shallow caves mm -hmm. that have the rock art in them. So yeah, New Mexico. I was just in New Mexico in May hiking with a, a friend of mine who lives on the Hopi. The Hopi a Reservation in uh, northern Arizona. She lives on the Third Mesa. And we went on a camping and hike, hiking trip together and found, oh, some amazing, some amazing panels in May. So you would take pictures of these and bring them back and, and just study them and that's mm -hmm. how your inspiration develops? Oh yeah, I have thousands of photographs that I've taken through the years and they are my inspiration. Uh, the, so the prehistoric people are my inspiration for my art. Wow. Mm -hmm. So, uh, have any idea um, in your travels how, uh, what is, would you say or would you know, uh, what is the oldest piece of art, uh, cave uh, drawing or rock drawing that you saw? The oldest recorded one was, uh, the oldest recorded panels that I've seen have been about 11,000 years old. Wow. Yeah, I know. And that they're so mysterious because mm -hmm. nobody really knows you know what they mean because it was 11,000 years ago that these were painted on the walls and sometimes th uh, people that came later painted on top of those and people that le later came uh, painted on top of those and so sometimes you can just look back at the history of these walls just by just staring at them and seeing the different styles from the different people that that carved and painted on all the different walls so they added to the art that was already there. Um, 
And is there a storyline with some of these, or is it just random pictures, would you say? Um, no, they're, they, I'm sure they have meaning. Uh, there are spiritual meanings, mystical meanings. Uh, I've seen panels that look like they're directions to something. Some look like maps. Some are solstice and equinox places. I talked to an astro-archaeologist last year and down in uh, Texas, and he studies the when the sun comes down in the, uh, on the equinox or the solstice. And, uh, and so it hits certain places on the carvings. And some of them are ceremonial. Uh, the, the, my Hopi friend uh, and I discovered some sites this summer uh, that she knew what they meant, but they were still used in the ceremonies on the Hopi reservation, so she, she, was on, she couldn't tell me what they, what they, what they meant. Interesting. So, um, and how many pieces of art do you have on display here? Uh, Fourteen. Fourteen. Yeah, wow. fourteen. Come on down to Fluid. Yeah. And this is only a, only part of your collection, is that correct? Oh, absolutely. I have four pieces in um, in the Roots Organic Juice Cafe down the street, mm -hmm. and then I've got I just got into Art Prize up in Grand Rapids, Michigan. So I just delivered my work up there. It's at at Water Brewery in Grand Rapids, Michigan. And then I have three pieces in Hammond at the vis at the uh, Lake County Visitor Center on oh. eighty ninety four. Oh, that's neat. Yeah, that's, uh, that's at the Visitor Center. Wow. Mm -hmm. um, so wow, you you really have expounded upon your love for art after your retirement. Oh yeah, I just yeah. I just love this. Yeah. So I've got to ask you. So teaching little bitty five year olds mm -hmm. to art, you what would you say is your favorite? Oh my gosh, I just loved teaching kindergarten. <laughs> you, know, I, you could tell every time you walked into your classroom, it was, you could tell just you love those kids. I, and I it, did. <laughs> so, yeah, it's, uh, it was kind of it was always interesting walking in your classroom. Um, so, uh, before we begin walking through, and that's what we're going to do, folks, we are going to uh, go through, and it's going to get, I'm going to be honest with you, it's going to get kind of clumsy because I have this uh, digital recorder. I've got to carry around for the radio station so we can uh, get the audio. And by the way, let me do state that um, the broadcast of this interview will be next Tuesday at 5 p.m., our usual broadcast time. And uh, so we will um, let you know when that's going to be, of course, through Facebook. And, uh, and so you'll, you can catch that as well. And it will be rebroadcast again. So you can catch it twice. You can catch Dorothy twice on um, uh, on our uh, rebroadcast as well as our pod uh, podcast that we will do as well. So multiple ways that you can get a get in, and listen to this and listen to D uh, Dorothy's story and uh, and the Facebook Live obviously will be up on our Facebook uh, account so you can go through and look at this interview there and that's the whole beauty of doing Facebook Live because now the folks that are going to tune in to Facebook Live will actually get to see for art which is going to be fascinating. Or you could come on down to Fluid Coffee Bar and enjoy <laughs> right. a cup of coffee and, and a look at Dorothy's art. So um, let's start with that. Which, which piece of art would you like to start with? Um, probably this one over here. Okay. It's All right. called Follow Me. Follow Me. And that's so exactly what I'm going to do, me. Dorothy. So you're going to have to bear with me because I've got cables and okay. whatnot. I think I can... Okay, go ahead. Can, We're you, good. can you see this piece right here? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Okay, there's a, there's a snake and... Uh, there's a bit of a reflection, but I think we could still make it out. Okay, well, the, you know, the snake in early, in early imagery uh, represents uh, a, 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 a spirit guide that can travel through under through under the ground and up on top of the ground, so it actually can go in the underworld and come back up. So you'll see a lot of snake imagery on the walls out west. And then uh, also because the snake sheds its skin, you know, there's a rebirth with the, with the snake. So there's a, a, also a, a, a representation of rebirth with the snake. And then um, the masks, the masks that are up there are inspired from a site that I saw in Texas uh, in Waco Tanks. And Waco Tanks is loaded with, it's in, it's in the southwestern part of Texas outside of El Paso. And it, it's loaded with um, uh, painted images, which are called pictographs. The painted ones are called pictographs. And there are a lot of masks in Waco Tanks. 
So the, the masks are actually are inspired from Waco tanks. And then these, these, these white strings with the dots on them, um, I'm also, a, I'm also a, a scuba diver, and I see lots of really interesting things under the water when I'm diving. And one night dive, I saw these little, it's called the string of pearls, and they glow and they blink at night. They're just absolutely beautiful. And then one of my favorite creatures in the ocean is our uh, garden eels. And I love, I love teasing them at the bottom of the ocean. <laughs> they, they come up and you, as soon as they see you, they go back down. They're very shy. <laughs> And so also with the, with the pastels, I do pastel work, and so I've worked in other creatures, other ocean creatures kind of crawling along inside of the bottom of the picture. So that's what that picture's all about. Amazing. That's very, and that is called again? It's called Follow Me. Follow Me. Mm -hmm. all right. And again, we will attempt to do that if we will follow you. Just. Um, move us to the next painting and we'll try to follow you right along. Okay, this is called The Visionary and I actually kind of based this image off of the, uh, the old European icons. So, you know, if you ever see a, a holy card or something, you know, you might see this kind of an image on it. Um, also, what it has is it has all these, all these images around the halo part that I'm that are that I see out west. A lot of those images I see out west. So it's kind of a spirit guide piece where the visionary can see into the past and into the future. And also there are some there's some lizards up here. And because I make my own paper, sometimes images pop out. Yeah, and let's we'll stop at that and explain that because that's something I don't think we've delved into yet. So all the paintings you see Dorothy has made her own paper, her own media to, for, to paint on. And do you want to take a little bit of time and explain that process? What do you do to make that paper? Well, it's cotton rag, so it's made out of cotton, and uh, it's, it's pulled. I don't know if any of your viewers have ever seen a decal where you can, where you can actually pull paper, but there is a uh, professional paper studio in La Porte, Indiana, called Hook Pottery and Paper. And Andrea Peterson is a professional paper maker and she rents out her studio to me and another artist a couple couple times a year. And we just go there and, and after I pull the paper, I color it right there on the spot. So a lot of the background that you see in my paintings was actually created in the paper studio. It's called pulp painting. And then when I bring it then, then when I bring the paper home I add watercolors, inks, and uh, pastels and, uh, to work the paper until it's finished. Yeah, mm -hmm. and those of you who are listening along on the radio and our podcast are really missing a lot. But I think Dorothy's doing a great job explaining what these paintings look like so you can almost imagine in your mind what they look like. And again, if uh, you really want to see the real deal, come on down the fluid. And, uh, but uh, they just amazing works of art. So do you want to move on to the next yeah, one? Yeah, sure. Right, cool. This one's called The Winter Journey of the Shadow Spirits. Now, and let me see, we got a bit of a reflection here, but I know we'll work through it. Okay. So well, go ahead. All right. Um, uh, this, this one, this one uh, with this particular picture, I was, I was experimenting by making my own stencils in the paper studio. So you can see some stencil work in here. And then also, um, there are a lot of uh, coyotes that I, coyotes is a very, uh, is a spirit guide for uh, many, of the, many of the early cultures. And so um, I just wanted to name these three creatures shadow spirits. And they're going on a winter journey. I've added winter colors to this one. And, you know, when you go on a journey, you don't know where you're going sometimes. Or, you know, it could be a spiritual journey. I mean, it could be a physical journey. Where are they going? What are they taking with them? Um, and then there are lots and lots of uh, images inside of the, inside of the images that I see when I'm on, when I look at the cave walls. Yeah. Now this one I find particularly amazing because within uh, the creatures are this amazing design. I'm going to try to get close up so you all can see it. So there's amazing intricate design of different patterns all the way through. And did you say that was a wolf? 
No, I, it's, it's a, a, it's a, it, well, it's a stylized coyote. Coyote. Okay. Uh -huh. All right. Yeah. So through this coyote, there is a massive amount of different patterns as well as the other creatures. So that's really intricate. Yeah. And I do that kind of work with, a, with India ink. Mm. I put that inside so, of the creature. So a painting like that, that has that much of intricate design within each uh, creature, how long would it take you to do something like that? Uh, well, when I start the painting, it usually takes two to three weeks until completion. Although I'm working on a painting right now that's driving me crazy, so it might take a month to do. <laughs> uh, so it depends. And you know, as we go on to the next painting, I still see some intricate design within the creatures themselves. Mm -hmm. And by the way, I'm going to share with you my opinion about what these creatures actually are at the end of the interview. But I don't want to scare any of you off, so we'll, we'll, we'll just keep going here. <laughs> um, this is called Abyss, and uh, it's inspired by, uh, especially this, this creature right here, this image right here, and this one too, inspired by a panel that I saw in Nine Mile Canyon in Utah. Now, Nine Mile Canyon is a canyon that is absolutely full. It's near Price, Utah, and it's totally full of rock art and you can drive your car and stop and actually look at it. It's pretty accessible. So, um, but Nine Mile Canyon right now is being is being taken apart by the uh, gas and oil companies. Mm -hmm. When the last time we were there they were excavating and carrying out tons of rock and creating lots of uh, acidic dust and so a lot of these images are disappearing. They're falling off the wall and um, and just being eroded. So I'm glad I have photographs of them because right. they might not be there much longer. One thing I do want to spend some time on and just let people see uh, through Facebook. Uh, through here you could see the edges of her may, the, the what do you call this? A, That's called the deco. The, um, so the, the media that you paint on, that you make yourself. That's the uh, edge the of it. The cotton rag. The cotton rag. Thank mm -hmm. you. And then again you can see the intricate patterns within, within each creature. It's simply amazing. Amazing. So, so I'm going to have to ask everyone to bear with me because I'm going to um, have to carry our recorder along, so that you folks that are just listening. Oh, now this one is definitely colorful. Oh, good. You can see it then. Yes. Good. Yeah. Definitely. In fact, this has the least amount of reflection. Oh, super. It's called Crossing Over, and um, you can actually see some fish in here. I, I sneak fish in a lot of my pictures, <laughs> um, and you can hunt for them when you come to see them. And there's, some, there's a pair of eyes up there, and then this is some of my stencil, stencil work from when I was making the... Uh, oh, there's the eyes. Uh-huh, yeah. you can All see right. the eyes up there, and then the fish are... You can see fish down here. And, it's, I, and this image here I use a lot. I, it's, it's actually considered to be a star uh, in, in ancient imagery, and you'll see it a lot in my pictures. I use that image a lot for eyes most of the time um, because it came from a, uh, from a panel in Waco Tanks, Texas, uh, The Starry-Eyed Man, and it's, a, mm. it's, an, I, it's an image that's really well known. So crossing over is pretty much left to the interpretation of the viewer. It could be a, a physical crossing over of some kind. It could be a spiritual or an emotional crossing over. Um, it could be an easy or difficult one or an adventure. But it's uh, it's pretty much left to the interpretation of the of the viewer. Yeah, just amazing amount of detail and the little white lines and some of the other designs. All right. Well, we let's see how many of these paintings we can get in. Okay. Good. All right. Go ahead. Do you want to? Okay, well, I'll come over here. This one. This one is called "Where?" with a question mark. Uh, this is inspired by a. Uh, I was on a hike in Arizona, and way up in way up in the mountain, there was a little baby eagle that was calling for its mom. It was just like rah, 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 calling for its mom, <laughs> <laughs> and I just felt. Yeah, so that wasn't the uh, <laughs> sound effect of the. Yeah. Just and I felt I felt so sorry for the eagle, and then so I this picture is actually inspired by that. It's a mom 
a, a mom eagle or a mom that bird that's carrying, carrying a baby, wow. and mm -hmm. she's looking for a safe place for her to to raise her 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 baby, and so she's flying over the over the canyons and the mountains looking for a safe place for her baby. And that's why it's called where, because she's thinking where, where, yeah. you know. Where. Now this again is something that you saw a facsimile of on a rock art that you came across. Yes, so it's, you were it's based on, yeah, it's based on the Thunderbird. The Thunderbird. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. so, um, one question I do have, so you've taken pictures of all this rock art that you came across. Mm -hmm. Do you ever hope to um, put that in a collection in of itself? and? Uh, I, I thought about it. I thought about uh, putting together a book, actually. Um, but, you know, I would, I would need help with that. <laughs> <laughs> well, we both know an author that could probably help you. I'll build illustration. You could find an illustrator to help you out with that. Yeah, one. for sure. But, uh, so that's interesting. So moving on here. Um, now, this, this one I definitely have opinions about. <laughs> this one's called liminal spaces. And liminal spaces are spaces between the physical world. So if you get to a liminal space, you're like on the edge of the, you're on the edge of the spiritual and physical world, okay? So um, my daughter was married in Hawaii and we went to the wedding. And, um, and of course, while I was there on the big island, I went hunting for the petroglyphs, right? That were done by the early Hawaiians. And I found two really beautiful sites on the big island. and and took lots and lots of photographs of what I saw. And so this, the white image in the middle is representing some of the rock art that I saw in, on the Big Island. And then, of course, we went for a night scuba dive. And the night scuba dive was called um, Pelagic Magic. And the boat takes you out three miles off the island and until you reach, until you get to about 3,000 feet. And then, then you jump in the water, and all of the night creatures from the open ocean start coming up from the bottom. And they, they glow, and you can see through them, and they're like fluorescent, and they're twirling, and oh, it's just, it's just an amazing, it's just an amazing dive. Yeah. So this picture is, see, there's, a, there's this, this one right here, um, was about 14 feet long when we saw it. And it was glowing. So, Is it like an eel, or well, it's actually a colony. Um, the, oh, the the animals okay. that the animals that travel a lot of times at night uh, go glom onto each other to conserve energy. Mm -hmm. So this one would would have been a, was a colony. So anyway, this whole picture is a representation of rock art and um, scuba diving. Liminal spaces. Is that correct? Liminal spaces. Mm -hmm. Right. So. If you stop by the coffee bar, then look for that one. So, all right, now, this one I definitely have more opinion about what it looks like to me, but I'm gonna keep that to myself. <laughs> this is inspired from a rock art panel that I saw in Arizona, and I named it the healer because, uh, you know, what does the healer need? You know, ask yourself, what does the healer need? The healer needs, um, at least in the prehistoric times, you know, they needed their spirit animals. There's some dogs in here. They needed, they needed uh, accoutrements, you know, magical accoutrements. They needed um, things to carry their herbs in. They needed music. They needed their voice. They needed the sky. So I tried to put lots and lots of images in this piece that a healer might need if a healer was, was traveling or going to a, a place where they needed to do some healing. Yeah, this definitely has different shapes. And I'll, I'll uh, since we may run out of time here, I'll express my opinion about some of these. These are actually aliens, aren't they, Dorothy? <laughs> no. Yeah, I, flying saucer. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. uh-huh. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> twirling, twirling spaceships. Right. Yeah, mm -hmm. right. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Truth comes out, Scully and Mulder will be by shortly to confiscate all your drawings. I think I see them pulling up outside. <laughs> now, it, it is interesting because uh, some people theorize that a lot of the rock art and cave art actually were um, pictures of visitors from other worlds. Um, that's just one theory, though, but uh, you know, obviously there are 
uh, as you say, they're more spiritual and, and um, have other meanings than that. But I'm going to hold to my opinion and say that these are aliens. Well, I have seen that. that I have You've seen, seen that. aliens. No, I haven't. You keep trying to trick me, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen images oh. that actually look like spaceships and, and you know, Did and space, space people with a... Uh, in real life? No, on carvings. On carvings. So yeah. you've never been abducted by aliens? Not yet. No. 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 Okay. I'm okay. counting on it though. But you then know, that will inspire a whole new line of paintings. <laughs> yeah, that'll be my new body of work. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Great. Well, we covered this room, I think, haven't we? Yeah. We All have. right. Let's move on into the other room, and okay. we've got about oh ten minutes before we have to close out the show. Okay. I just want to so, say one more thing about the images. Is you know a lot of these images were done on, in when the when the carving, the person that was carving it was in a trance hmm. or in an altered state of consciousness. And so, you know, if, if you go back into your imagination, you can come up with all kinds of creatures, you know, not just aliens, right? Well, I'm thinking <laughs> pictures of inside of spaceships. And, yeah, there you go. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm, I'm holding to that theory. Um, this, work is, this work is called Wolf Magic. And the wolf is a is a is an icon that's very um, popular or was popular back then because the wolf was very powerful. It's a predator, so you know it gives a lot of strength. And um, and so uh, the style of this is different than the style of a lot of the others because this is the plain ceremonial style. So the rock art that I see out west. Um, the styles are dependent on geographical areas, cultural areas, and the time period that it was carved. So this would be more of a plains, a plains kind of a picture, and you can identify it by the W um, in the W in the uh, shoulders and the big shield. See the big shield. This is actually a big shield. I was about to say. So it looks like a wolf holding a shield. Mm -hmm. with the spear. That's, yes, mm. yes. All right. And uh, you can tell it's uh, pre-European because when the Europeans came, they brought the horses, so then the, the, then the native people had to actually go to smaller shields so they could hold them on their horses. But, they were, they, but before horses, they used the large body shields. So that's why you'll see the large body shields. And then there are bear claws in the middle because the bear claws are actually provide lots of protection, the bear claws. Amazing. Yeah. So let's see. And this is taken from a, a site uh, in Montana. And this one is called? This one's called Wolf Magic. Wolf Magic. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. And the, this one is called the Messenger. And it's a cat. And the cat was considered to be a messenger between the seen world and the unseen world. And so it could carry messages between like a physical world and a spiritual world. So um, I used a lot, of, I, a lot of images that I see on the walls to put inside of the cat. So these would be the messages that are being carried between the two worlds. So that's on the back of the cat, almost like a... To me, for those of you who are just listening, it looks like a turtle shell on top of a cat. That's kind of what it looks like, just for those of you listening and can't take advantage of looking at the art. So we hope you can, though. Mm -hmm. It's amazing because some of the detail and imagery that some of this spurs up is just absolutely amazing. And again, this is all done on her medium that she made herself. Amazing. Yeah, it's cotton. It's actually cotton. The piece that I'm working on right now at home, I decided I didn't like it, so I put it in the bathtub and scrubbed it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so it's kind of like what, you didn't like what you're working on, so scrub it away and start over. Yeah. Kind of like a... Yeah, and it uh, came out. I could have hung it on a clothesline. It's, <laughs> it's cotton. <laughs> well, there you go. Oh, uh -huh. man. That's yeah. amazing. All right, so we've just we got four more. Let's see if we can get through this. Okay, this one is this one's called Spectral Damsus, and it's um, which means dancing spirit, and it's from a, a site that I saw in um, Arizona, and it's just I just really like it. And there's the image, the eye image here that I use a lot in in a lot of my pictures is that that star. There's a star here too. Now this is probably one of the more, and again I'm not an art 
so excuse me, but just for those of viewing, from my interpretation, this is probably one of your more abstract pieces, wouldn't you say? It's um, I, I don't know, I think they're all kind of abstract, but... Um, no, they all look like aliens, but, <laughs> but this one I... Um, so, interesting, okay, so... Yeah, this one kind of looks like a skeleton or something or other. Yeah, and I, you know, a lot of them I don't know if they're male or female, but by the time I get done with them, a lot of them look like they're female. I don't know why. But, but again, what I would call some of the amazing detail that's within the image of whatever this is. It's Just a dancing spirit. This is a dancing spirit. Okay. Uh -huh. Yeah. All right. All right, now... Okay, now, if this is not an alien, I don't know what it is. I really, folks, look. look. Hmm. Okay, at any rate. any rate, um, it's named, I, I named it Atabeira. And Atabeira is, a, is a, um, a water goddess from s South and Central America that guards the lakes and the streams. And when I made this paper and brought it home, all of a sudden this central image just popped out at me. So I just kept it and outlined it. And then added uh, the mountains, you know, because the mountains are the beginning of where water starts. That's the emergence of water. And then uh, the birds, water birds, and then um, floating, floating, uh, Creatures there's, in the water. And they're then like round creatures that yeah. she's pointing to in the drawing. And then there's there's the eye image mm -hmm. on these three here. And for those of you who may want to come out and uh, look at this, uh, this one particular one that we're looking at is the third one in from the front door. So, it's, but again, it's got an amazing amount of detail in it and and just objects. Really. Interesting. So let's move on to the next. Oh, we're going to enter. <laughs> Oops. No, someone's going to get in our. Well, let's see. Probably we can stand back here. And oh, do this. okay. All right. Um, this one is called uh, Ethereal Vision. And uh, it is take, these, these are taken from um, images that I see on cave walls a lot. I see lots of images that are similar to this. I should say similar because I do use artistic license on all of my pictures. But um, the, the thing about these is that, you know, the early people, nobody really knows if they believed that they, they were putting power on the walls or if power was coming from the walls. Because when I go to, a, when I go to one of these rock art sites, um, they all have a, a certain feeling about them, you know. Um, sometimes it's a kind of a scary feeling. You know, there are there are Native Americans that will tell you not to go to a site because uh, because something bad might happen to you if you leave the site. Uh -huh. Like a uh, bad juju or whatever. You know, that's in, inside some of the sites. So um, they, especially the hand ones that are on the, hand, on the walls with the handprints. Um, it's, it's, are the hands coming out of the wall or are the hands going into the wall? And you can see in the, in the back of, that I put on with pastels, is you can see like horns, kind of. And horns really signify power because horns take you up into the, into the, into the sky. You know, they connect you to the, to the higher levels of, of consciousness. So, Interesting, um, yeah. yeah. And all three of these have horns? That are, yeah, yeah, I see all three of them. Yeah. Interesting. Yes. So why don't we move on to the last one because okay. we are running out of time. Okay, that one's called Night Vision. And it has a snake in it, kind of a playful snake. And of course the eyes are the, the, the starry eyes, like I put in a lot of my pictures. And it just represents, um, I would say it just represents sometimes at night, people wonder what, hap what, these, pre what these images are like at night. I was at a site in in uh, let's see in the Dinwiddie area in the Wind River area in Wyoming, and there were hundreds of carvings on boulders, and every carving faced the lake. And I was on a ranch that that people were using as a meditation ranch, and they said they did not go out at night to look at the look at the carvings because they heard weird noises coming from the panels at night. And they were to go out there. I bet. <laughs> so I didn't go back at night. I wasn't invited. But I never did hear what happened at night there. But 
Now let's uh, take a broader look at all your paintings here, fluid. Yeah, let's see if I can, uh, there we go. And so these are all of her paintings in the front of fluid. So let's just walk on back. And this is, I've got to say, this is probably the most colorful one out of here. Yeah, especially the way the lights hitting them. Yeah, and purples and red. Yeah, yeah. Amazing. Dorothy, these are absolutely amazing. Thanks, Bill. And so these are also for sale here, right? So yes, they, can they are. Talk if they come in. If you come into uh, Fluid Coffee Bar and just talk to Chuck or uh, Allison, they will get you a price on each one of her paintings. The label should be on them by tomorrow. So. Ah, great. And today is Wednesday, so uh, yeah, just give you an idea. Uh, and again, this will be here the rest of the month. Yes, we're great. having a closing. We're having a closing reception on September 29th from 6 to 8, and the coffee will be provided, and they have the best coffee ever here. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they do. Yeah, so come, come, to the, uh, to, come to the closing reception on September 29th at, from 6 to 8. 6 to 8. Uh-huh. Right. So we'll definitely be here. Well, Dorothy, this has been great. Um, this is the first one of these I've done at Fluid, actually. So uh, I hope the view that have been uh, following along at home or office uh, on our Facebook Live has appreciated her art because it, it is absolutely amazing the uh, detail that you see and um, just the image the, the images that contain small granular detail is just fascinating so it uh, is truly uh, fascinating so Dorothy again we like thank you for uh, showing your art and uh, joining us at Fluid Coffee Bar and uh, congratulations on your collection this is thank you. absolutely amazing and there are also some at, at Roots, right? Yes. And uh, was there uh, The Visitor Center on 8094 off uh, the Lake County Visitor the Center. The Lake County Visitor Center. So uh -huh. she's covering both counties, Lake and... <laughs> I am, yeah. So, and, uh, and Atwater Brewery in, um, in Grand Rapids, Michigan. So, oh, so yeah. in two states. Yeah. And again, try to get out here and actually see this yourself. It's an amazing and I still am holding to my theory this is alien art that somewhere along the line Dorothy's been abducted and this is her inspiration but that's just mine. No, all kidding aside thank you again and uh, for you folks at home thank you. Thanks Bill. And um, again this is a Facebook live but if you uh, want to tune in next week uh, what is the date next Tuesday my goodness this is totally unscripted, folks. Uh, Sunday's the 10th, so it'd be the 12th. The 12th, okay, exactly, the 12th. So uh, Tuesday, the 12th at 5 p.m., this will be broadcast live on WBLP uh, 103.1, and you can also stream. By the way, we have a new website, so it's a lot easier to stream. And uh, then, of course, we will have a podcast available shortly, uh, probably shortly after this interview. So. Uh, keep in tune, folks, and we wish you a safe rest of the week. And again, get out to Fluid Coffee Bar, enjoy some coffee, and just to take a tour of some of Dorothy's art. Thank you. Goodbye, Dorothy. Bye. Thank you.